Good evening and welcome to Cracking the Girl Code here at How the Light Gets In. In public and personal life, according to Girl Code, no woman can be wrong and women must support other women to prove their feminist credentials. But while some celebrate any woman in power, whether Jacinda Ardern and Angela Merkel, or even Amy Conant Barrett, Sarah Palin and Priti Patel, others argue that like men, women, must be judged on how they use their position. The gap between girl bosses and the activists is widening. So should women support other women independently of their qualities and their approach? Or should we call out the differences between exploiting the patriarchy and overthrowing it in order to achieve lasting progress? Is feminism about being on the side of women, whoever they are and whatever they stand for, or has individualism taken over the movement? With me to discuss this tonight are Nina Power, who is a cultural critic, social theorist, philosopher, and translator. Her interests lie primarily in art, feminism, and politics, and she will soon be producing a new book called What Men Want. What do men want? What do men want? Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> With me on uh, my immediate uh, left is Maya Oppenheim, who is the Independent's women's correspondent. It's a unique role, and she is the only women's correspondent at any UK news out outlet. Maya covers news, social policy, and global stories from a woman's angle. And finally, on my far left, we've got Hannah Dawson, who is a historian of ideas, currently lecturing at the history of political thought at King's College London. She's a fellow of the Historical Society and the editor of the recent Penguin book, The Book of Feminist Writing. That's right. Good, thank you. So there is our uh, esteemed panel. Now, uh, the question, and I'm going to ask each of our three contributors to lay out their thoughts in answer to it, is, should women always support women? So, Nina, can we start with you? I'm really tempted just to say, sure, unconditionally, why not, just as a joke, but no. Um, that would be ridiculous. I think, for me, feminism, if it means anything, is the freedom to fail. And in fact, women don't really have uh, any form of kind of emancipation or existential uh, liberty unless they can make mistakes uh, publicly and privately and I mean Simone de Beauvoir makes this point in the second sex in the 1940s um, but I really think it's it's absolutely true because otherwise women are th nothing other than victims or dependent or they're more like children so I think the sort of emancipation of women sort of depends upon this becoming adult, which is to say, to be able to, to not succeed. Um, and that would therefore include um, fucking up at high level. <laughs> uh, so being a terrible prime minister, for example. Uh, but I think also the ability to publicly criticize each other is extremely uh, necessary. Um, you know, I, on the other hand, it's a very, very competitive and unpleasant world and I think there are sort of tendencies that we don't want to encourage in anyone, <laughs> children, men, women, um, which might be to do with our baser instincts uh, along the lines of kind of envy and tearing people down. Um, so I think we all need to be kind of aware of those things as general human tendencies and um, I don't know, to be more psychoanalytic collectively about it, actually. I think a lot of the time people present arguments as if they're political, but in fact they're personal. Um, and one of the things that feminism does, I think, is introduce a whole uh, type of, a, a range of discourse and a historical perspective um, that adds to our understanding of these for, sort of forces and desires. But women are not exempt from criticism, nor should they ever be. And I think when women get things wrong, they should take it on the chin. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. I'm going to turn to Maya now. Same question. Uh, I guess you just got to look at their viewpoint. You know, not all women in positions of power, whether you're in a FTSE 100 boardroom or you're in, you know, a cabinet meeting with Boris Johnson, not all women there want a more 
egalitarian, a less racist, a more feminist society. So, I mean, I just think you need to look at, you know, the ideological standpoint of women in positions of power. Like, I'm not going to stand here or sit here and say, yeah, I love Thatcher, you know, great that she privatised all the social housing in this country, great that she, you know, drove up poverty. Um, so, yeah, it's more complex than just kind of this straight idea of let's get more, you know, women into kind of seats in the Houses of Parliament. It's not a crude thing that you can quantify. It's not about just about gender kind of um, greater representation. Um, I guess you just need to ask the question of what kind of world do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a world where between two and three women are murdered every single week in the UK, that is, by their former or their current partner? Do we want to live in a world where, you know, women routinely are whacked in prison for simply having an abortion? That might be when they've got pregnant, you know, from rape or incest. Um, yeah, do we want to live in a world where I think every 16 hours a woman is shot in, shot by their former or their current partner, shot dead in America? So yeah, but then you have to take the flip side, you know, women in positions of power disproportionately suffer so much abuse, you know, rape threats, death threats, whether that's women journalists, whether that's women politicians, whether that's celebrities, or then if you look at it from the human rights angle, often human rights defenders, if you look at the women that are fighting for human rights around the world, if you look at the abuse that they endure, it's far more likely to be personalised attacks. They're far more likely to have attacks on their children. They're far more likely to end up withdrawing from public space because of the abuse that they're experiencing. So yeah, I think it's a complex question. Yes, women are not immune from criticism. That's a sexist, condescending, pan patronising view to take, but also we don't want to be abusing them as so often happens. Thank you very much for that. Hannah, same question. Um, as Maya's already kind of suggested, that strikes me as a, as a kind of mad question. Um, and the answer has to be no, insofar as some women, especially women with power, oppress other women, those women who are oppressors should be called out. Um, I mean, the idea that, the, that feminism is about kind of unconditional or, or automatic support for women as women strikes me as failing to understand um, the history of feminism, which is as much about the conflict between women historically, as it is about the struggle against patriarchy. So if you look throughout the history of feminism, what you find are women calling out other women for their oppression. So if you think back to the very beginning of the so-called first wave um, of feminism in, in America, um, the declaration of, of Seneca Falls, the declaration of sentiments where Elizabeth Cady Stanton stood up and said, we declare it to be self-evident that men and women are all created equal. She then went on to show that she actually thought that some women were more equal than other women. And she thought that suffrage for white women should be fought for before suffrage for black women which prompted this kind of white feminism, prompted Sojana Truth, a woman born into slavery, escaped from slavery, to ask the question, ain't I a woman? Which points precisely to the way in which feminists themselves have excluded particular kinds of women from the category of womanhood. If you go on into the second wave, you think of another iconic hero of the movement, um, Betty Friedan, her amazing book, The Feminist Mystique. Uh, she, she also thought that um, lesbians were a problem for the movement for feminism. She thought that, they, that feminism might not be so successful. And she called lesbians the lavender menace. And uh, by the way, uh, lesbian feminists responded to this by saying, fuck you, and um, they created their own group, the, the radical lesbians. And if you just think now in our own time, think about Priti Patel, who, who Barry mentioned. Um, there we have a woman who is uh, proposing a law that will refuse asylum to the most, some of the most vulnerable women on this planet who are refugee women, trafficked women. 
So I think it's clear that women oppress women, that the history of feminism has been as much about the resistance to this as it is to the resistance to um, patriarchy, and that true solidarity um, has to be about liberation for all, justice for all, not just some and those with power. Uh, which is why, in the words of um, Audre Lorde, she says, I am not free while any other woman is unfree. Hannah, thank you, and thank you all for the, uh, taking those uh, three minutes to set out uh, your view. It, it, it's often assumed, I think, that when we use the word feminism, it will mean the same on everybody's lips, but that's probably not right. So I wondered if we could begin with you, Nina, and just, just ask, you know, can we get clearer about what feminism means or what you mean by feminism? To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.